Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the University of Southern Mississippi. Great to see so much black and gold here uh, this afternoon, and everybody all excited. Everybody doing good today? Everybody excited about today? All right. Well, how about we start it off the way we do a lot of things? Southern Miss? Great. Well, of course, this is a special occasion. Uh, we've not had a, a lot of changeover, as you're aware, in baseball. You know, you go back to 1958. Actually, I guess you go before World War, after, right after World War II. Uh, you had a coach, and Clyde Heffer Stewart took over the baseball program, followed by Pete Taylor, followed by Hill Denson, followed by Corky Palmer, followed by Scott Berry, and now followed by Christian Ostrander. So what a great group of coaches, great group of men, all men that have made great contributions to the University of Southern Mississippi. And so we're here today to officially bring on Christian Ostrander as our head baseball coach here at the University of Southern Mississippi. And, of course, baseball is such a special sport. We're the envy of everybody around the country with the way we play baseball, the way you fans turn out for baseball at Southern Miss and make it one of the best places in the country to play college baseball. So thank you for being here today. We'll get started with our program. Going to start off and bring up the guy who is in charge at the University of Southern Mississippi, I think was a baseball player in his own right, maybe one day. Uh, outfielder? Did you tell me you were an outfielder one, day, one time? Pitcher, too? You pitched? Oh, outfielder? All right. Great arm in the outfield. Did you throw a lot of guys out at the plate? All right. Well, this guy's done a great job, too. We're very lucky to have this guy as our president here at the University of Southern Mississippi. Uh, what a great, uh, great feeling he's brought back to Southern Miss and to Golden Eagle Athletics and all over the campus. You walk over the campus, you see this guy everywhere. His door is always open, whether he wants it to be or not. But it's a great time to be a Golden Eagle, great place to be, and a great time to be at Southern Miss. So if you would, join me in welcoming the president of the University of Southern Mississippi, Dr. Joe Paul. Joe. All right. Thank uh Thank you all. Um, it is a, a great day and a great season uh, in life to be a Golden Eagle, and I could not be more honored and humbled to serve you all as the 11th president of this place. We've had a really good year. I've uh, been at this since July the 18th, and every indicator you can imagine for the university is up in terms of uh, private giving, in terms of season ticket sales, in terms of Eagle Club memberships, in terms of uh, where we look to be in student enrollment in the fall, in terms of funded research, it's all going on. And what a year we've had in Golden Eagle Athletics. When I was interim president this summer, we went about uh, to alumni all over um, our footprint, and I int would introduce Will Hall and say, now coach, if you can just win six games and get us to a bowl game, I'll go down as the greatest interim president in the history of Southern Miss. And, and he did that and more. And then look what we did in cross country, winning our first Sun Belt Conference Championship. Uh, those women are extraordinary, and the 14 of them have a 3.81 GPA in addition to that trophy. And then you look at what we did in men's and, and women's basketball, it was just unprecedented. And then another uh, jaw-dropping, amazing season in Southern Miss baseball, which brings us to this very happy occasion today. And, and I just have to tell you that, um, that I get asked a lot. Uh, in this job, as we visit other universities in athletics and in other ways, I get to meet a lot of university presidents. And they always want to know, how do, you, how do you have this sustained excellence in baseball year after year after year? Now, I won't tell them how we do that, but I'm going to tell you because I believe you already know. You know, it, it really began the modern era with, with the mad scientist up here on the front, Hill Denson. Um, and, and I'm looking at my buddy Rick Maddox. A few of us were out there said, you know, we, we'd probably pay for tickets if we had to. And uh, just built that field, uh, envisioned the roost, made it a reality, uh, did some crazy things out there. I think one time he started four catchers at field uh, positions in the field because they could hit. Did his own way. Uh, but he started this unique Southern Miss culture, a culture of grit, where we set audacious goals, say, you know, we can get to Omaha. We can contend for that every year. We can host a super regional two years in a row. 
You know, we can have seven consecutive seasons of 40 wins or more at Southern Miss. And people look around like, you can't do that at Southern Miss. And we say, hide and watch. Or if it's on the weekend, we say, hold my beer and watch this, right? <laughs> but then we pursue those with an uncommon passion, an uncommon passion. And the kicker is this, a relentless persistence. At Southern Miss, we never give in, we never give up. We refuse to lose. People were asking me about the last Tennessee game. I said, we didn't lose, we just ran out of innings. Bring them back out there, stay there long enough, and we'll put it on. So the key to this culture, though, is the succession. So Hill Denson has the wisdom to hire Corky Palmer as his assistant. And he grooms him, and he prepares him, and he hands this precious culture, winning culture, over to Corky. And Corky enhances it, and he's got the wisdom to bring Scott Berry in. And he's, he prepares him, and then Scott Berry for 14 years enhances it, becomes the winningest coach in the history of Southern Miss baseball. And then, yes, sir, and he's with us today. Um, and then Coach Berry has the, uh, the wisdom to bring in the Wizard of Oz, uh, who did amazing things, who's got a world of experience, and, and is ready to assume this mantle, right? But this pressure, this this culture. I mean, we're looking for a certain kind of player with a certain kind of work ethic, with a certain kind of integrity. That's going to be a team player. It's going to love this university with all his heart and all his soul, and and it's going to be better every time uh, he comes out on the field. And when he leaves here, he's a better man than when he came. And you see some of these men out here today. But what I want to say to you, returning players and coach, to you and your staff, is you know this culture is sacred, right? It's a covenant. And we got to uphold it. You players have to teach this to the record recruiting uh, class that's coming in. You got to keep it. It's precious. And it's up to you to sustain it. We drop it one time, and then we're, we're, we're at ground zero. So I know you will. And we've got many more happy days ahead at the peak. I asked when we were coming in, I said, we need to turn the heat up to about 95 or 100 in here so these people will be at home. <laughs> like we were in that series, uh, but didn't do that. So uh, I want to say to Coach Scott Berry and to his family, thank you, Coach Hill Denson. You started the fire. It's still burning. We appreciate you. And you, Coach Ostrander, I give you my full support. I have every confidence in the world that will go to even greater heights. And on behalf of all of you, thank you for loving Southern Miss. Thank you for loving this baseball uh, program. Southern Miss? I'm not sure if this next guy knew Christian Ostrander, if all of us did, but uh, he certainly was a part of a Christian Ostrander's baseball career. And uh, amongst the many, many great moves we've made at the University of Southern Mississippi, Joe, over the years was bringing in another Delta State baseball player to uh, be in charge of athletics here at Southern Miss. And that was several years ago when we brought Jerry McLean on board. And uh, all of us in this room, if you haven't realized it yet, will shortly realize what a great move that was and how Jeremy, in his own kind of unique and special way, has kind of made Southern Miss what uh, we always knew it could be, always knew what it should be, and uh, when it was in its greatest times is what it was, and that's what Jeremy McLean has done here at Southern Miss. So Jeremy, a pitcher in his own right, so we got a pitcher now running the show in athletics, another former pitcher that's getting ready to take over uh, the baseball program, got rid of the catcher, the catcher retired right, the catcher, Coach Barry, retired. We got the pitchers now in charge of things, and so to officially make this very, very special announcement here this afternoon, if you would, please give a warm Golden Eagle round of applause for our Director of Athletics, Jeremy McLean. Jeremy. Thank you, John. Really appreciate that. Um, this is a, a, a great day. Really appreciate uh, the show of support, everyone being here today, um, a proud day for our program, a proud day for a very proud program. You know, Dr. Paul hit on some things that we're obviously very proud of, the fact that we've been to seven consecutive uh, regionals, seven consecutive 40-win uh, seasons, uh, a program that's had four coaches in 60 years. And, and uh, 
I think that has uh, definitely been the secret sauce for us. And uh, so I do want to recognize, and Dr. Paul alluded to these guys, but I'm going to embarrass them just a little bit. Coach Denson and Coach Barry, would you guys stand up and let everyone acknowledge you, please? And the fact that they're sitting here today front and center says a whole lot uh, about our program. And, and, and we all know that Corky would be sitting right beside him if he could. And we know he's smiling down for today uh, for sure. So we appreciate you guys. I also want to recognize another group that's uh, been pretty instrumental in our success. Would our players stand up, please? You guys stand up. <laughs> Danny, you stand up too, Danny Lynch. You stand Danny, we'll make you stand up. We'll row you over July 1 to the coaching staff. So we're really proud of you guys and what you've done. Um, as I said, today is a um, really proud day for our program, an important day. You know, it's, uh, this is a big decision for us. And uh, when I came back to Southern Miss in 2019, I kind of jokingly said to someone, you know, the most difficult day we may have is when Coach, Coach Scott Barry retires because we'll have a big decision on our hands. Well, that wasn't entirely true from a standpoint of as I got here and I began to spend more time with our baseball program, it became pretty apparent pretty, to me pretty quickly that um, the next guy who was going to lead this program was already in the dugout. And I think Coach Barry figured that out pretty early too. Uh, as a matter of fact, he and I several years back just kind of were talking about the future. And, you know, I don't necessarily think he was thinking about retirement at that time, but he knew it wasn't too far away. And uh, I could just hear in his voice that he knew the right man was, was here. And so uh, we're excited about that, certainly. I want to talk about uh, Christian for a little bit. Um, you know, we talk about our succession plan and how this program has really been successful because we've been able to promote, promote from within. But it's not just about that. It's not just about promoting from within. It's about making sure that you have the right people ingrained in your program. And whether it was... You know, Coach Denson and Corky, to Corky to Scott, and Scott to, to Christian. It's about people who are made up of the right things. And, and one thing I know is, is that Christian will put his own stamp on this program. He will run practices the way he sees fit to run them. He'll recruit the way he thinks we need to recruit. Um, but the character of who we are, uh, what this program is about, what the expectations are, the accountability level, those things are not going to change. Um, you know, Christian, his background is one that's really based in work ethic. And I, and I know it firsthand. John, uh, John alluded to this. Uh, I've known Christian for almost 30 years, which is uh, it's hard to say out loud. It doesn't feel like it's been that long. Um, but, a, but a guy who uh, his career path has really almost been perfect for this job. As a player, uh, he learned how to work really quickly, and I was right there by him, so, so I can attest to that. Um, as a coach, you know, he got his first opportunity at Delta State to be a pitching coach, took an opportunity in the Sun Belt, actually, as an assistant at Arkansas State, um, and then left that job to become a head coach. So became a head coach at the high school level. I think he knew he needed to do that. Uh, became a head coach at the high school level, then had a great run at Jones College uh, as, as a junior college head coach. Uh, and then, you know, got back into the Division One ranks, um, and I can remember in 2017, I'll never forget where I was. I was at a travel baseball tournament for my son, standing in the heat somewhere in Birmingham, near Birmingham, Alabama, and, and Christian called. And uh, he said, I need to talk to you for a few minutes. And I said, okay. I got away from the crowd, and we started talking. He said, I have an opportunity. He was at Louisiana Tech at the time, played, working for a great guy in Lane Burroughs. But he said, I got a chance to go to Southern Miss. And I um, you know, haven't been here long in Ruston. I'm, I'm, anxious about moving the family again. And I said, you know, I know it's a big decision, man, but here's what I will tell you. Southern Miss, the baseball program at Southern Miss is a very, very special thing. And you will never work for a better person than Scott Berry. And so those are the two things I left, um, you know, with him. And not too long after that, he texted me and just said, hey, I'm, I'm headed to Hattiesburg. And so it was a very proud day for me. Of course, I did not know that I'd be standing up here today with a great honor to uh, have the chance to introduce him. Um, so, you know, God's plan, that's all I can say. And uh, we feel very, very confident about where this program is headed with his leadership. And it is my distinct pleasure to introduce you to your new head baseball coach, Christian Ostrander.
Wow, there's a lot of people here. I uh, appreciate you all coming for sure. I, I saw on the, uh, the itinerary that I got from Mary when I got here that I had four minutes to talk on the itinerary, and I said, I don't think that's going to work, but I'll do the best I can. So um, humbled, honored, blessed. I mean, all the words, got, you know, just to be here, to hear what you just heard, what this program's done, what Coach Barry has done here, and Coach Denson, Coach Palmer, and all those, and to, to, to be the next guy is truly, truly an honor that I, I take extremely seriously and, and uh, going to do everything in my power to advance and grow this program and do everything we can to continue what this man, and this man, and others have done before. So no doubt about that. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of folks I need to thank, and uh, you know, I need to do that. This is... You don't get these opportunities very often to stand in front of, of folks and, and, you know, honor the people that helped you get here, helped you get this opportunity. So I definitely want to do that. First of all, Dr. Paul, thank you for your leadership and your guidance, your direction. It is truly awesome to see you out at all events with the energy that you bring and that you give uh, to our athletic programs and stuff. I don't, I don't think there's a lot of them out there that do that, and I know that is a very special thing. But thank you for believing in me as well. Uh, Jeremy, you know what? If you'd have told me 27 years ago, man, when my last game of college baseball was 27 years later, we'd be here right now. I'd be like, wow, you know. And good to have Will. He was on that same team with us, you know, and stuff too here. But uh, thank you for your leadership, direction, your belief, your confidence, um, who you are, what you are, and uh, really look forward to to working with you and uh, alongside of you as well. Uh, Coach Barry, obviously, man, this I wouldn't be here without you. And uh, love you like a brother. Love you, Miss Laura, your family. And, uh, you know, bringing me here however many, six years ago, was the biggest impact on my life and my family's life. So um, appreciate you greatly and uh, your belief in me. So it's about all I can say there. I got I to gotta make a story real quick before I talk about, you know, being the successor with, you know, of, of, of Pete Taylor, Coach Palmer. Uh, Coach uh, Coach Denson, Coach Palmer, Coach Barry, and stuff is this. So it's kind of crazy. The very first time I ever pitched a baseball in college, I was a junior college in uh, fall of 1992 at Mississippi Delta Community College, and uh, we played in September. We played at Pete Taylor Park in the fall, and uh, who were we playing? Meridian Community College, and uh, Coach Barry and Coach Palmer. Uh, their team, and needless to say, they, they thumped me pretty good. And uh, But I remember that vividly. And the things that I think about, how ironic, you know, you look back you know, 31 years later um, that you're in a position as we are now that, the you know, God's plan for sure, in, in my opinion. So um, didn't, get, didn't know Coach Taylor, obviously, but I had the great pleasure a couple weeks ago to meet his wife, his sweet wife, Gloria, and and his daughter, uh, Barbara Gandy, they came by the office, I think it was before the Super Regional, and um, introduced themselves. I think we got a picture with them. But it was really neat to see how much this program means to them, even to this day. And uh, I thought that was very special and uh, pr uh, proud of that opportunity. Coach Denson, you know, uh, I've known you many years. Love you. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Love to hear your wisdom and, and, and everything that you share, but what you've done to get this program going and your vision and stuff with it and what we see in the roost and just everything. I've seen the pictures of where it started to what it is now. Uh, truly an honor, uh, you know, to be up here. And I appreciate your friendship and, and uh, your, your direction and, and your help with me and anything. The text you send us all the time when we're on the road or wherever, it, it means a lot, a great deal. Uh, I wish Coach Palmer was here, just as Jeremy alluded. And, uh, you know, as we all do, because, you know, he was a big influence on me in my career just from – uh, the respect of seeing, you know, a lot of my career in Mississippi and, and what he did at Meridian and here and, and so forth. And then the time I had here, um, you know, before his passing, you know, was precious to me as well. He would get on to me pretty good in that in that uh, office about pitching decisions and stuff like that. But uh, and I listened to him and I and I welcomed it and I and I and I took it to heart. And uh, but it was all in good taste and good fun. But uh, I would give anything if he could have if we could have had some of those conversations these last three years and some of these pitching. Uh, things he would have loved it. He'd have loved to see some of the things that we were able to accomplish, and and, and just um, he'd love to see a pitcher pitch a good game. There's no doubt about it. But uh, you know, wouldn't be here, you know, uh, without you know, I wouldn't be doing myself the honor without you know recognizing him as well. And then, and as I said earlier about Coach Barry and what you've done, and the um, 
the six years, these last six years have meant the world to me, and it's gone by in a heartbeat, and it's unbelievable. But Coach Barry, job well done. You know, I mean, you've left this program in tremendous hands, uh, in, trem in a tremendous place, and um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why not? Why not? So, uh, he told me to say that, so anyway. Um, Others I want to, you know, introduce or, or, note, or recognize is uh, my staff, you know, my assistant coaches um, that, that are here. we got uh, one that's not here um, that uh, you'll get to know later, and I'll mention him in a minute. But uh, Coach Creel, uh, he's been on, on the fifth year, I guess, on staff here. Does a tremendous job. Uh, thank you for being here, being part of this staff. Ben Brewer. Uh, who's now going to be his third year on our staff and uh, does an outstanding job. Appreciate you. Coach Bradford, um, who will be our third year as well and uh, on our staff. Thank you for being here. And um, Coach, uh, Coach Rhodes is the other assistant that's uh, going to be a new one. You'll get to know him as we go. We told him not to come, stay on the road recruiting. Uh, he wanted to be here, but there's a huge event going on. Coach Creel drove in this morning. Uh, from that to be here, and I appreciate that. But uh, Coach Rhodes is there working for us right now, recruiting and getting after it, one of the main events we need to be at. Uh, Coach Danny Lynch, uh, that sounds good. That sounds good. Uh, making the transition from one of the best players I've enjoyed coaching and, and being around and the infection you brought in practice and games and stuff. Can't wait to watch you do that as a coach So, as well. Um, uh, also, we have a new uh, director of baseball operations. She probably didn't know I was going to say this, putting you on the spot. So Carly Malden's right here. Wave your hand, Carly. <laughs> Former... Uh, former athlete, Division One athlete, coached here at soccer at, uh, at uh, Southern Miss and other things. And uh, we'll learn more about her as we go because I know we're going to introduce some of these folks, the new folks on our staff. Uh, strength coach Todd McAvicka does a great job. I mean, tremendous job. I don't know how many years you've been here now, Todd, but it seemed like five years, six years. And uh, what he does with our players and stuff, and these guys will attest to it as well, is tremendous. Um, our trainer, Sven Pearson, uh, I'm not sure if he could make it, uh, but Sven does a great job with, uh, with our guys as well. i got to mention Kylie Amato, who is our academic advisor that I talked to through Texas this morning. She couldn't be here, but we appreciate, appreciate what she does for us. Lloyd Lunsford, where you at, Lloyd? Where is that? There he is right there, our team chaplain. Uh, we love you, Lloyd. Glad you're doing well. And uh, I'd be remiss not to mention you because you are part of the family, as well as Jack Duggan right there, our sports information director that's with us on all those bus trips and plane trips, as well as John Cox. So that's kind of the, the crew that, um, you know, we spent a lot of time with throughout the year and stuff. Wanted to talk about them. I have some family members that are here that I want to talk about. First of all, my mother and father are here. So thankful that y'all could be here to share in this excitement. Art Ostrander and Sylvia Ostrander. Uh, you know, they, they helped instill my love of baseball at, at, at an early age, you know, taking me to, to games, camps, this, that, or whatever, and supporting me throughout my career all the way. And uh, I love you, Mom and Dad, and glad you all are here. Uh, my mother-in-law, Hilda, and her husband, Wayne, are here. Um, thank you for your, your support and time and coming, and, and appreciate you all, you know, being here to support this as well. And uh, you all mean a lot to us also. And then, obviously, i got to thank my wife, my wife and my daughter, Allie and Caitlin. And, uh, you know, they're the rock. I mean, she's, she's the rock star of the family. She, she's, she does it all. My wife is, as any coach's wife knows, or any coach knows that the coach's wife is the glue. It's so important. They've got to be all in. They've got to be invested. They've got to be uh, willing to uh, lend you away a long time. And you've done that, sweetheart, and I love you and I appreciate you and, and all the support through the years of my daughters. A uh, lot, of, lot of tough decisions moving you around, changing schools, you know, but figure it out. You know, we had to. And uh, I think the guys uh, know that sometimes that's, that's what it takes. And I think you're better for it, and I think so. But the support y'all give me in my career, I wouldn't be here without you. So love you guys and uh, appreciate everything. And I got a, their, their two boyfriends are here, uh, Evan Murders and Kemp Simpson. Thank you very much for being here, folks. So, um, you know, there's a lot. I'm, I'm, I know that's a lot, and there's still a few more that I'll probably recognize as I go. But, you know, the sacrifices I just talked about, you know, in this is uh, it's a journey. It really is. And it started, you know, uh, 
many years ago as a player in this state. You know, in high school, I mean, my route, I'd, I'd, I'd go way past my time if I talk about that. But, uh, you know, how I got to Mississippi, I went to junior college in Mississippi. I started out Mississippi Delta Community College. Uh, got there, uh, sight unseen. Uh, I got to Mississippi Delta Community College in uh, August of 1992. And little did I know what a decision that was. Little did I know what a culture shock that was going to be, too. And, uh, but it was. But, um, one, I met my wife there. Um, I, I kind of, you know, I, I saw her and, you know, and started chasing her around, and, uh, and the rest was history. So that was a positive in itself. But uh, I had two people there, you know, my coaches at Mississippi Delt, uh, the head coach, Terry Thompson. Uh, you know, an unbelievable uh, coach in, in his own right in, in the JUCO uh, ranks uh, years and still stay in touch with him. Came to a game. We saw him at, at one of the Supers uh, games. And um, Coach Terry Thompson had a huge impact on my life as well as his assistant, Brock McBurry. Uh, still close to those people to this day. Didn't know it then. Figured it out along the way in my coaching career how much they influenced me and what they meant to me. So I had to say something to honor them. That was as a player. Then I left there and went to Delta State University. Got there in the uh, fall of 94. And uh, Coach Bill Marchant, uh, God rest his soul, is, is, was a head coach there. And he was a, he was a tough coach. That was a time after his accident where he's in the wheelchair and, and coaching at that time. But he still was, uh, was a great coach and, and uh, had a great influence on me. But his assistant coach at that time was a man named Mike Kennison who ended up taking over for him uh, a few years later. And, uh, you know, and the stuff that we learned, you know, as players that are here, that I can say that with Jeremy and Will here, I'm here because of that. They're here because of that. They're, they're, they're where they're at in their lives and so many others and, and stuff and the lessons that we learned uh, – from the, 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 the idea of, of family environment, of, you know, just the t unity, the togetherness, the hard work, the blue collar, the grit, the stuff that we taught. It was instilled in us. We had no choice. I mean, if you survived and you played, you're going to have it. If you didn't, you're not going to make it. You would get out of there. So those times were special. And, and then the other one is Boo Ferris. You know, that was a man that was, oh, man, it was uh, instrumental to me of, of, of growing and, and learning and just the, the wisdom that he shared and the time I can remember going to his house and his sweet wife Miriam would always bring a piece of cake and right out of the oven it felt like seemed like in a glass of milk while we're talking baseball coach Ferris loved those times he loved uh, he loved to bring us into his home and and share that with us and a special special man for sure that uh, I owe a lot to and as, as so many others do uh, after I get done playing at Delta State, I stick around and coach. I started as a GA uh, in 1997, and um, that was also Coach Kennison's first year as a head coach. And, boy, did I learn on the go. And uh, I learned everything about how to take care of a field, to this, to whatever. You, th you name it, learned it. Blue collar, 100%. And uh, we had good teams, too. You know, we had a lot of success. Uh, you know, I was there six years as a coach. After I got my master's, he hired me full time. Didn't know what I was doing as a pitching coach. I had to lean on Jeremy more than anything because by the time he was a senior, he wins 15 games. Heck, he was he was my pitching coach. He was my assistant pitching coach. But I uh, didn't really, you know, I really evolved, started figuring out things. You know, I didn't know it. I was there six years, made a tough decision to take my family. Allie wasn't born yet. We go up to uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas, at Arkansas State University with Keith Kessinger. I was there four years with Keith. Uh, Really, really uh, looking back on it, such a great uh, time in my career because I just saw one way, you know, six years as a coach, two years as a player. Now I'm seeing another way for the next four years. A lot of right in each one, a lot of differences in each one. Didn't know it at the time, but it's kind of, it's shaping me. You know, it's shaping me for when my opportunity came. I had a great time there. Took a big leap of faith. Ten years I've been as an assistant at, the, at uh, six years at D2 level, four at the JUCO or at the uh, Division One level. I decide I'm getting out. I'm gonna go to high school. I was ready. I, I thought I was ready to do something different, be a head coach. At the time, didn't care about levels. Didn't matter to me. I love baseball, and uh, you know, I wanted to coach. And I had an opportunity to go to Gulfport High School. And if I didn't do that, if I didn't make that decision back in 2000, what year was that, Amy? Six. 2006, the summer of 2000. If I didn't make that decision, I don't think I'd be here today. I really don't, because I think I got back down to South Mississippi and I got it back to the association of people and stuff and relationships and things, and just kind of things started kind of falling together. I quit. I, I left the job, and a lot of people thought I was crazy. Well, you'll never get back in college. 
I said, well, okay, you know, whatever. If that's what it is, it is. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to be the best coach I can be and see what happens uh, and go from there. So go to Gulfport, there two years, not looking to leave. Then all of a sudden, Jones County Junior College comes up. I uh, had, a, had a friend of mine say, hey, man, you should go for that. And I said, no, nah, I've been burned on some of those before, tried to get those jobs. And good old boy, you got to know somebody. You know, I'm good. You know, and it kept being persistent. Go after it very casually. Little I know, Coach Ferris made a pretty good phone call for me, too, and I think that helped a lot. You know, with the two. But I get a call, go in there, interview, left there, say, yeah, I think it went good. Came home, remember coming back and telling them. And sure enough, got the opportunity. And I thank Dr. Jesse Smith at Jones County Junior College for that opportunity those years, uh, that many years ago, because it, that was where I really found my identity as a coach. I, I think I was able to apply so much and grow and do this or whatever. We had a great time doing it. Uh, some good players. Got to send some good players here to Coach Barry. Uh, that really started making our relationship even a little stronger and deeper. We already had one, but just that association and proximity. I remember bringing my daughters to games and watching uh, watching Southern Miss play at Pete Taylor Park while we were there and thought, man, this crowd's tough. I like it. It's awesome, you know, and, and stuff. Little, little did I realize once I got to Louisiana Tech and I'm in that dugout, how tough it really is and, and stuff. It's a totally different animal, but um, – you know, that's kind of my path there. I, I decided in, in, in December of 2015 that, you know what, what's my future goal? What do I want to do? And I knew I could have stayed at Jones and had a blast and do that. But I wanted, to, I wanted to hopefully have a chance to be a head coach at this level one day. And I knew I had to do something. I had to get out. I had to, I had to, I had to make that jump. At least that's what I thought. Um, Greg Goff was the head coach at Louisiana Tech at the time. He's a guy that I had a relationship with that, that uh, coached us at uh, Delta State back, you know, back in 1995, 6, and 7 and stuff. So I've known Greg over the years. He, had, he was having success. And it was the second time that fall that he contacted me about coming to be his pitching coach. First time, no, I'm good. Second time, it's like, whoa, okay. Tough time at home. I mean, goodness gracious, it was uh, – my wife couldn't believe it. I said, really? And, I, you know, so we look at it, go, and ended up taking it. You know, a lot of prayer, a lot of thought, a lot of trust with the family, took the job, just kind of jumped out there and got back in the, 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 the D1 uh, rat race, if you will. And um, it was a great decision. Had success. He was there, he was there one year, went and moved on. I stuck around. Lane Burroughs, uh, former Southern Miss guy. Uh, a dear friend of mine uh, to now, and I know as well as Coach Barry's, uh, was hired as a head guy, asked me to stay along as an associate head coach. I said, yeah, let's do it. We just, we just got here. We liked it, and it was, we had a good ride in 2017 that season, and, uh, and it, was, uh, it was a fun year. It was a year that, uh, that I'm glad I had that experience uh, with Lane and staying there. Really didn't have any intentions of leaving at that time, and then Coach Barry calls me that summer uh, about a pitching coach op op option that's open and opportunity and I knew him. Uh, I knew who he was. Didn't know him like I know him today, uh, obviously, but uh, I knew there was something special. And I remember as a guy that was in another dugout at Louisiana Tech looking over when we played Southern Miss, I, said, I, I remember watching their celebrations or whatever. I, I want to be part of that. I want, I want to feel that. That's who I am. I want, that. I want to be at the top. You know, that's where I want to get. I said, there's something special about it. So, when I got that opportunity, you know, from Coach, it, it was a no-brainer. Um, it really was. You didn't have to do anything, really. You, you had me and, um, you know, and stuff. But, uh, man, am I thankful for that. Uh, you know, all those options, all those people, all those places in my career and path has shaped me to where I am today. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, and those six years being able to, to have an office right next to you and watch your interaction, watch how you – tie into the people, the community, and the investment you made. I've, I've been paying attention, and I've been, I've been you know, watching every move and listening to things, and I realize that's, that's why this place is so special, is, is the connection that great leaders can make with people. And, and, and that's, that's going to continue. There's no doubt, because that is, that's some of that special sauce, Dr. Paul. That is, that is, it is sacred. It is something that uh, it's not going to just happen. You've got to invest in it. You've got to earn in it, and you showed me that. You've done a great job of showing our players that, but you've also done a great job of showing your assistant coaches that too. And for that, I thank you for sure. Uh, this program in, is in the great shape, great shape, for all the reasons I just said. You sit in a place. There's a lot of people when they get up here at a podium accepting the job. It's like, we're going to win. We're going to do this. We're going we're gonna to win. We do that here. We know how to do it. It's been shown there's a path, there's a route, and so forth. And I don't say that arrogantly or lightly at all, but the, it, it's there in place. And now the next step for me is to, number one, continue that. 
It's continuation. It's growing something. You can have great things and it can get better. You've got to believe that. It's never going to get to the top. There's no such thing as perfection. All right, not in what we do, but we're going to try. You can, go, you can win a college World Series, but it wasn't perfect. You're probably not going to go undefeated and so forth. So to me, this program, where it stands right now, is the special place that I want you to know that I have paid close attention to of what it takes. I've had a great leader and man to show that way, and our players have too, and they would vouch for that as well. And stuff, and so it's really about getting in, locking in, putting your head down, working hard, and take something that's really good and turning it into something even better, whatever that might mean. The culture here is outstanding. Most places are talking about, you know, you can put up brick and mortar, you can build stuff, but if you don't have a culture, that's one of the hardest things to attain. There's no doubt about it. The culture set here. The culture is there. It's a great culture. It's, a, it's an expectation to win. It's an expectation to dogpile. It's not just to make regionals. It's to host regionals. To do all that stuff. And that's not going to change. That's something that uh, we're going to work, our, us as a staff, are going to attack every day. Waited a long time for this opportunity. I promise you're going to get all you can from me and stuff. And I don't take it lightly. And I know these guys that are going to be with me and these players feel the exact same way. Our fan base... Is, un is second to none. I mean, y'all kill it. It's, uh, you know, what we finished ninth this year in, uh, out of ninth uh, in the country in, in, in total attendance. That's, that's outstanding. That's something that deserves to be applauded. It matters. These players will tell you it matters and stuff. And I promise you the other team feels it too. I promise you that. So uh, there's, there's an identity to the program. It is blue collar. It's grit. It's anywhere, anytime, anyone, anytime. It's that mantra and stuff. And, and I think that's it's kind of that edge, that attitude, and that mentality that uh, I know that's what I want our players to have and so forth, too. And uh, we got to have the same thing and, and stuff. And certainly our fan base and, and, and uh, supporters do. A couple components to continuing this growth, what I believe in, is something that Coach Barry started. I'm carrying it on. Everything matters. Those two words, they, they, they mean so much. They, they're simple words, but they mean a lot. They carry so much weight. Everything matters, gentlemen. Everything matters in the classroom. Everything matters what you do off the field. Everything matters what you do in that weight room, on the field, in practice, you know, and all those things. Everything you do makes, makes a difference, has an impact, it has a result. And uh, we're going to continue to, uh, to build off of that. You know, we want to create men. We want to build men and, and done a great job. It's been, it's been going on here. The, uh, the amount of successful people that's come through this program, the success they have afterwards is outstanding and, uh, and stuff. And we want to do that, but you've got to work at it. It's not just lip service, you know. When we talk about everything matters. It's not just saying it. It's really meaning it and getting these guys to understand the, the, the depth of it and so forth. But that's a component to continuing the growth here. Another component to me is, is building relationships. I think that's what it's all about. Uh, I believe that. I mean, X's and O's, teaching the game, teaching a grip on a pitch, you know, a swing and all that. We're all going to do it. Everybody at this level is probably pretty, pretty decent at doing those things, right? I think the difference of separators that, that really helps teams get to another place is really diving in and getting the players the good players to believe it, trust it, and, and buy into it and go and put everything they have into it. And the only way you do it, you can't fool these guys. You can't fool them. They're going to figure out if you're not genuine, if you don't love them and you don't invest in them, even though you bark at them and kick them in the tail every now and then, but they're going to know. They're going to know, and you've got to invest in them. You've got to build relationships. The relationships have to happen from coach to, to player, no doubt. As Us as coaches, that's our job. Dive in. Get to know them deeper, whatever that might mean. Coach the player relationship. Okay, build them. Help them become a better husband and father one day. Build them up. And the relationship has to be player to player. And that's something that's special at that, Southern Miss. I've seen it. Me and Coach have talked about it numerous times. Players that's played here have seen it. Is there's a passing a torch type atti uh, attitude there. As a new come in, the old put their arms around them and show them the way. This is how it's going to be done. And it just kind of carries on. All the traditions that happen in our baseball program and stuff at Southern Miss. The player-to-player -player relationship has to be worked at. Has to be, guys have to get out of their comfort zone. You gotta go and introduce yourself to that new player that you don't know, invest in them and stuff, and you build unity, you build cohesiveness. And there's gotta be a relationship with player to community. And I think our guys have done a great job of that as well. I think that relationship of, of being available, signing autographs, guys, 
doing those things, taking time to go to that elementary school and playing wiffle ball with them, going reading a book, going to the Dubard school, doing all those things, anything and everything you can do, be visible. You're at a restaurant, you see a kid that has on a Southern Miss, uh, whatever, go up to him and say, you know, hey, you know, introduce yourself or whatever. It goes a long way. There's stories upon stories of that within this program because that's been the way it's been done for years and years and years, and that's going to continue here because that is definitely uh, one of the main ingredients, the secret sauce, the sacredness of what this place is all about. In the recruiting world, bringing in the right player. I say all those things, you bring in the wrong dudes, it doesn't work. Okay, so the character aspect is, is extremely important to us, and we're going to continue to do that. We know what that model looks like. We spend a lot of time trying to find out. We can go out there and see, that's a good fastball. That dude can hit it far. He can run fast. Who is he? What is he? And make sure, does he fit our program? Because when you have something sacred and you have a culture, you don't want to disrupt it. And it doesn't take much to disrupt those things. So we got to do a good job of really evaluating the person and who they are when we bring them in. We're going to recruit the high school model. We're going to, our model is going to be just like it has been, man. We're going to be hard at the high school model. I believe in that. I believe in that. I believe in getting young talent and develop them, letting them grow, let them, let them get there. We're also obviously going to bring in junior college talent when we, we need it for specific things as that. And then there's another element in this new age of coaching we call the portal. We all hear it. We know what it is. You've got to be a player in it. But this program is not going to be built on that at all. That's not, that's not sustainable, in my opinion. I don't believe in that. I think it's about developing and investing in good young talent and letting them grow and teaching them. I think that's how you get consistency. I think that's how you have the ability to have sustained success and the, uh, the torch being passed along. Don't get me wrong. We will, we will use the portal, and we have. But it will be more for spe uh, specific needs as we go. But whoever we bring into this program, we're going to do our due diligence, making sure it's the right fit. Uh, on the field, I mean, you're going to see a group, man, that's going to get out there. It's going to have high energy, high energy, effort, enthusiasm, life. You, it should be obvious when you're up there in the stands that, uh, you know, these guys love to play. They love to be out there practicing and so forth. So that's something they're going to hear from us a ton. Mentality is a big thing. These guys will know it. I talk about it all the time. The mind's a powerful thing to them and, and, and stuff, and it is. The physical's there, but the mental part of it is the stuff that uh, you got to work just as hard on and so forth. But all the, the blue-collar uh, blue grit, toughness, um, you know, the, the pride in who we are, Talked about it being sacred, that we have a responsibility. We do. I have a responsibility. The coaches have a responsibility. The players have a responsibility. When you put that uniform on, it's like a cape. It's like a superhero cape. You're putting something on that means a lot, that people have done so much before you and paved the way that you have no choice. You better elevate your game. You better give it all you got. You better do what you got to do because when you put that on, you're putting on something that has power in that Southern Miss when it's those pinstripes or that gold, or whatever it is. When you put that cap on, it means something. And, uh, and we're going to talk about that, and we're going to have that kind of identity with what we're doing. We're going to prepare these guys to be great players, great students, great contributors in society, great husbands, great fathers, great men. That's our job. And this is a great platform to do it. You know, uh, baseball uh, is a humbling, humbling sport. You're going to get popped in the mouth a lot. And how you respond, what you do thereafter defines you, and so forth. So this is a great teaching tool for so many things. Um, you know, in closing, this job, our job as a staff, uh, take real seriously. I promise you that. Excited, humbled. I mean, it's uh, it's a dream come true. I can tell you that. It's it's a it's a dream come true. I've been thinking about this many, many, many years. Many years, and people have asked, and I've told them, I said, no, Southern Miss was definitely something on my mind. Didn't know. Didn't know what it is. Didn't try to force things. Put your head down, work hard, try to be a good person, and things will take care of itself if you allow it. I believe that. Um, Southern Miss has great expectations, high expectations. I'm sure it's not going to change. Our goal is to win championships every year, every year. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take work, but that's our expectations. That's the standards we set. It's a high expectation, high standards, high expectations from the fan base as well, and we welcome it. We want that bullseye right there. That's what we want in this program and so forth. We'll get to Omaha. We'll get to Omaha, and one day we will win that last game of the year. You've got to believe it. You've got you to fervently believe that. You've got to visualize that. You've got to smell it, taste it, hear it. You've got to believe that, and that's the message we're going to send. It's not going to be easy, but it can be done. You've been somewhere once, you can do it again. There's no doubt about it. You know, knocking the wall down, busting those walls down one at a time, 
And uh, and I know it's not it's not lip service, folks. This is I do believe that as well. And I know it's, it doesn't come easy. It takes a lot of sacrifice and effort and stuff. But that's the mentality we have to win the last game of the year. And that's what we're going to work towards. Thank you so much for coming today. Uh, again, it's an honor, and I appreciate this turnout. And I've been looking forward to saying this: Southern Miss to the top. Uh, Christian stay up here. We're going to bring Jeremy back up here. Going to let our friends uh, in the media. And first of all, thank you, folks, for being here uh, today. Thanks for all you do in covering Southern Miss, both athletically and academically, and everything to do with Southern Miss. So, Jeremy, if you'll join Oz up here, we're going to call on some of our folks in the media. And we've got uh, got this this one down. Right here. Oh, okay. All right. Over here, Max has got the microphone. So if our members of the media, if you just raise your hand, Max will bring you the uh, microphone, ask a question to Jeremy or of Oz. So uh, we'll get it started. Questions, questions, questions. All right, here we go right here, right in front. If you would, identify yourself and your affiliation. So uh, Coach Ostrander and Jeremy, you'll know who you are. All right, um, Jordan Davis for Clarion Ledger. First of all, Coach, congratulations. Um, what are some of the changes that you've already made to the program in your first few weeks with the program, or or do you plan on changing? You know, this summer. Uh, you know, really no changes. You know, as, as of yet. I mean, obviously, there's some. You know, we've addition to to our staff. Um, you know, and and so forth. Uh, really, it's been what, two weeks, I guess, since, and it's kind of been, you know, hit, hit the ground running, you know, there's recruiting going on and, and stuff and just really trying to, you know, tend to the, the now, you know, our, our current team, once we had exit meetings, finding out, you know, uh, how things look and then making sure you're putting your team together and preparing for the draft that's coming up and because you really don't know until, you know, that aspect of it, of what your uh, personnel looks like. So uh, at this point, no changes, uh, you know, I would say, at, um Maybe just uh, an addition or two, and uh, just kind of tending to matters. Coach Scott Watkins, Sun Herald. Um, did you have an increased role in this year's signing class, and what are your thoughts on that group? Uh, yeah, I mean it's the same as it always been. Um, you know, obviously, you know we knew about this for a little bit. Coach Barry kind of you know let me have the reins on maybe the numbers, you know, and stuff. And, uh, you know, but we've always communicated as a staff and stuff and our assistant, you know, Coach Creel and myself and, uh, you know, uh, really kind of uh, prepared, try to prepare a little bit more for uh, the times change a little bit. You know, we, we learned last year with, uh, you know, the transfer portal and the draft that, you know, you can be surprised at some time. So I think our, you know, our the landscape of our recruiting this year uh, was a little different than it has been in the past. But um, you know, but trying to protect the program first for sure. Uh, Coach, first off, congratulations, Scott Kirk, yeah. WDAM. Uh, but Coach, um, when Coach Barry kind of sat you down, not sure how that process went, but you know, when you were the guy for this job, what was that conversation like, and what did he tell you specifically? Well, some of that I'll keep between me and him, but, uh, you know, it was uh, special, very special in the fact that, you know, uh, it means a world that he, because I know what this program means to him and, and how much, you know, blood, sweat, and tears he's put in it. And, and to, to have a man that you respect so much and you love to, to say, hey, I want you to, to have it, and, you know, there's nothing better. I mean, I can't, there's, not, there's nothing that will happen in my career that will, uh, top that, in my opinion, and I sincerely mean that from the bottom of my heart. So, um, no, it was, um, it was. Unfortunately, it was. Well, I'm, you know, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say everything, but uh, it was a very special time, and uh, you know, for me, and um, and it's one that I'll, I'll value, you know, and cherish. So I think I'll just keep it inside, you know, what all that went down. Uh, Andrew Abadie, Pine Belt Sports. Uh, Coach, could you speak to the addition of Lad Rhodes? Sure. Yeah, Lad's a guy that I know. I know him. I know him through and through. He's uh, uh, a young man I coached in high school. I coached in junior college. Uh, brought him along at Jones, I believe. Uh, he was a volunteer, I think, at Jones while I was still there. When I left 
Uh, I think he um, ended up coaching with Coach Kirtland at Jones. I couldn't tell you what years that was, 17 maybe, um, and stuff. And Lad is uh, Lad's a winner. Lad's got extreme character, high character, and those things were really important to me, to who I brought in and what I uh, bring in there. The cohesiveness of the staff and the unity of the staff is extremely, extremely important. And, uh, you know, and, and he's a guy that's been here. He was here as a volunteer. I guess he got here in the fall, fall of 19. And, um, and then COVID hit, and uh, he ended up leaving in the fall of, help me out, Trev, 20. Fall of 20, went to Charleston Southern and uh, was there for a year plus, then got hired at Nickel State. There the last couple of years, done a great job, took that team to a regional. So high character, high character guy. Very excited about having him, and, and I know these players will be as well. Uh, Jackson Kennedy, 4th Street Sports. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say uh, congratulations. But, you know, Southern Miss is pretty unique in the way of having these seamless transitions from, you know, Pete Taylor to Hill Dents and to Corky Palmer to Scott Berry and now to you. In what ways do you see your roles changing this upcoming year? And in what ways do you see those roles staying the same? Well, for me, I mean, I know there's, you know, the head coach is going to wear multiple hats. I understand that. And there'll be um, things that an assistant have, hasn't had to, uh, worry about as much could just really focus on coaching but uh, for me uh, you know pitching is kind of what I do um, you know it's, it's it's what's I think allowed me to get to this point and, and stuff so I mean I, I'm going to still be right there with that along with coach Bradford and, and doing those things but uh, uh, you know I can't give that up I, I love it and and and, and so forth but also going to have more of involvement with obviously the, the entire team we'll let uh, you know, Coach Creel and Coach Brewer and Rhodes and, and, and Danny and those guys, let them, you know, get after it with the hitters and stuff. But I'll probably have input with things as well and stuff. So I know it encompasses a lot. Um, you know, for me, the changes from on the field is, you know, I'm going to continue to do what I've done uh, and stuff, but also knowing it's going to broaden a little bit too in certain areas. And then obviously uh, the things off the field, I know that's going to grow as well. Hey, Delaney Dukes, Fox 23 News. First of all, I want to say congratulations. Uh, Coach, can you talk a little bit about how it feels to follow a legend like Coach Barry? Wow. Um, how does that feel? Um, it feels special. Uh, it's big shoes. I've had so many big shoes. Feel. I said, I ain't feeling those shoes. Have you ever seen his feet? I'm not feeling those shoes <laughs> and, uh, and so forth. But, uh, no, it's um, – you know, I wouldn't even try to fill his shoes because there's only one Scott Berry, you know, and, and, and that's the way I look at it. And um, I would be I wouldn't be as good as at what I do if I tried to do do it, do be Scott Berry and do it his way. Now, there's things that we have a lot of common ground with a lot of similar beliefs and values and morals and stuff that. Uh, so I think there'll be a lot that that you'll see that that is similar and stuff like that. But uh, there's never going to be another Scott Berry and following him. I'm not going to try to be. I'm going to be Christian Ostrander. And uh, and do you know do it the way that that I have had great men that show me show me the way and the example and it's now up to me to you know kind of put that out there but um, very very proud very humbled to to have that like I said earlier that means more to me than than anything and it really does because uh, you know respect for a man and and, and you know and you, you care for a, an individual and a love for a human being and to be able to for that person to believe in you to give up, give you an opportunity to. Be the next guy it just means the world to me. Hey, Coach Bradley Davis, WAPT Sports in Jackson. Great to meet you. Um, so you touched on this a little bit. What's the most important thing that you want to carry over um, from Coach Barry? And then what's something that's a little bit unique to uh, you as in your coaching style? Well, what I need to do, I need, you know, Coach Barry does so well. I mean, he has so much wisdom when he spoke. It, it just it resonated, you know, and his calmness is uh, – I don't know, knew exactly the right thing to say at the right time, and, and it really, really carried a lot of weight. Uh, steady wins the race, you know, as he says so much. Uh, uh, I've been watching that and, and, and knowing that that's, you know, I'm, 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 I'm kind of high energy, you know. I'm, I'm, I don't know, I, I can be confrontational in, in a good way, don't get me wrong, and, uh, you know, and, and stuff, but uh, kind of uh, a bull going through a china shop deal with some things and just, you know, and this, but I also know. Uh, and again, the, you know, been paying a lot of attention over the years that uh, a huge attribute that coach possess is so many of them, but one that is that is just a, a nurturing, calming ability uh, when the ships, when the seas get a little rough and stuff, the right thing to say to help calm it a little bit or when the 
it's too common. We need to stir it up a little bit, the right thing to say and, and stuff. So, uh, yeah, you know, just try to take a lot of that experiences, you know, the, that I've, I've learned uh, alongside of him um, through these years, you know, and carry it on because it's clearly working and it has worked. And like I said earlier, this, this program doesn't need an overhaul. It needs continuation with growth. Uh, Taylor Corrupt, WDAM. Uh, Coach, when did you know you wanted to get into coaching? And I wonder, you talked about it, but the early influence those coaches at Delta State just had on you. I knew I wanted to coach. I'll never forget. It was December of 1994, 5, 95. I was at home Christmas in Texas, and uh, I fixed to marry my wife in six months after the season's over in June, and, and uh uh, I think I had a, a business degree and all that stuff. And I, the reality hit me like, I'm not playing pro ball. Baseball, I love baseball. It's fixing to be over. What am I going to do? You know, and stuff like that. And I said, well, if I can't play it no more, I guess I need to coach it. And I went back to Delta State that January before school started. I changed my major. I'll never forget Dean Caston, education, the dean of education there, kind of looked down the glass at me. And I said, I said, young man, you realize you're fixing to graduate on time with a business degree? I said, yes, sir. He said, you want to change now? I said, yes, sir, I do. And, uh, and the best decision ever made and, and stuff. So uh, I love baseball. I love it. Love everything about it. Uh, if I couldn't play it anymore at the time, I didn't know what coaching meant and stuff. I mean, I had coaches that were, you know, tough and taught me stuff. And, uh, but I knew um, that I wanted, to, I wanted to stay with it. And uh, Coach Kennison gave me an opportunity as a graduate assistant in, in 1997. And, you know, kind of the rest is history there. And uh, loved every minute. It doesn't feel like it's a job. I can tell you that. Hey, Coach, Blake Brandon, WLOX, congratulations first off. But, you know, you talked about this goal and this aspiration of wanting to be a head coach at the Division One level. So walking out to Pete Taylor Park, putting on your hat for the first time as a head coach of Southern Miss, what's that going to feel like for you? Probably nervous, probably nerve-wracking, to be honest with you, when that time comes. Uh, no, it'll be special. It'll, it'll be special. It'll, um, like I said, I, I believe, and I'm not saying this arrogantly, that I'm prepared for this and, uh, you know, to, to go do it and, um, you know, baseball is a very tough game, humbling game. You're going to have the ups and downs. We all know that. But when that day comes, it's going to be extremely special. Uh, I'm going to be very appreciative, um, you know, of uh, of the opportunity and, and just not take it for granted. And, and honestly, uh, try to make Pete Taylor Park fans and everybody proud of what they're seeing out there on the field. That's our job. You know, as Coach always tells us, we're entertainers. You know, we need to entertain so these folks want to come back. So that's going to be, you know, our goal and obviously win games. That's it. All right. Well, folks, again, I, I thank you so much uh, for coming out. Very overwhelmed with the, the people. And I see a lot of faces that, um, you know, it means a lot that you be in here and so forth. And, and again, I thank everybody for the opportunity. Great job. This, this, was, this was special to me and my family, I know. And, uh, and I'll finish it up with one more time. Southern Miss. I want to remind you, we got some uh, we got some snacks out there in the uh, hallway. So uh, I know many of you miss lunch. So uh, go out there and enjoy a few snacks before you go back to work. Uh, Jack, over here, we're going to have the members of the media. Got a little bit of a media scrum going to take place over here, right, Jack? With with Oz, with Coach Oz and Jeremy as well. All right, and Coach Barry, if you want to answer any questions, are you tired of asking questions? All right, are you sure? All right, we'll let you do it one more time if you want to. All right, well, hey, th thanks to everybody for being here. It meant a lot to us that you showed up today. I know it meant a lot to Oz and his family. Uh, the great tradition of Golden Eagle baseball continues now under the leadership of Christian Ostrander. It's going to be another great, uh, makes you wish that February was just uh, a week or two away, doesn't it? So it's a great time to be a Golden Eagle. Thank you, folks, for being here. Thanks for all you do for Southern Miss, all you're going to do in the future for Southern Miss. And uh, as we wrap up, don't forget the snacks, but one final time here this afternoon, Southern Miss. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here.